Come on in here, Bailey. We're gonna do a video. Come on, Bailey. Jump up. Jump up. Good boy. Good boy. All right, guys. What is up? It's your boy Kids coming back at you guys with a video talking about the new strongest character in the game, Conduit. And I have been, you know, kind of looking around to see what other professional players have opinions on this character. And kind of the funny thing that I'm seeing a lot of is multiple professional players comparing her abilities to Watson and openly saying that Watson is still stronger than Conduit. And like multiple people have said that like her pylon is specifically better than the tactical. And it just kind of breaks my brain because, you know, you just run some quick math on this. Like I watched a video from Soar, like a bunch of people from Soar. Like there's one guy that literally multiple times was like, I don't know. I think Watson's kind of just better. And I'm just like, all right, like I, I don't know how you like reach that you know, logical point in your brain. You know, if you do any of the math involved, right? And then Imperial Howe is sitting around like, I don't know if Conduit's that useful. Like, she's kind of not as good as Watson. And I was sitting here, like, my whole brain is like, what do you mean? Like, so straight up, like, we're going to cover the, the difference of the abilities and kind of, you know, I actually think the strongest team combination, just to say right in the beginning, the strongest team combination right now with Conduit is going to be Watson, Conduit, and Lifeline. Uh, just to quickly go over, it's the only team in the meta right now that can have a situation where your team is one clipped, like two different players are one clipped fully. You have no damage whatsoever downrange. The enemies push in thinking it's a free kill, free squad wipe. But what actually happens is your team has advantage because all three of your players are going to be up with full health inside of a trap building that they can't nade or ultimate as they walk around the corner. So honestly, it's the only team that can create a situation where you're at an absolute point where you should just be an easy wipe. And then you actually are holding advantage and should be able to defeat the team that one clipped multiple of players on your team. So, you know, let's do the comparison. I would say both of these characters belong on a team together as the strongest team combination possible. But we're going to do the comparison between their abilities just because. So, three minutes. Three minutes is Watson's ultimate. And then her ultimate heals by 250 health. So, you can also use ultimate accelerants to just kind of pump those in. And accelerants take about like six or seven seconds or so to get to fully load her ultimate. Uh, accelerants for her ability actually do a lot of work. They're like 40 to 50% through. Normally, accelerants are only like 20 to 30% for a lot of abilities so it's actually actually very impactful for conduit as well to have accelerants but her main thing that makes her the strongest character in the game is the tactical heal that first tactical heal if your teammates you know the the average effect it'll have is a 60 60 in the beginning of the game is a little bit more like an 80 80 that kind of got nerfed down a little bit but i've had multiple situations where actually if you have red shields on your team there are moments where your tactical will fully heal the red shield so you know in situations where you have red shields and you're fully healing the red shield on your teammate inside of three minutes your conduit will heal 2,220 shield. Like, what the, like, bro, that is literally 22 shield batteries going off in the span of three minutes. Like, 22 shield batteries, to actually get that amount of shield batteries off, you're going to spend almost two minutes to just put on shield batteries. Like, straight up. Like, that is, like, re- ridiculous like and you know and just like oh like i love it like i love it like oh i love it it's, like, it's so good but you know just straight up the comparison you know that first ultimate from watson you know say you have multiple people with red shields on your team that's only going to heal two shields straight up the ultimate is going to heal two shields and you have to stay in the spot while you're healing and then you know inside of the first activation you're going to be able to fully heal the red the a teammate's red shield while giving yourself 60 or a partial full shield which in a lot of situations will still be you know both people getting full shields but on that second activation within 30 seconds you know if your if your teammate has the red shield and you do 125 and 60 for you for you know 185 you're doing what, like 370 shield within 30 seconds so within the 30 second period you're over 120 more shield than your watson now like the watson can keep up by like burning accelerants and creating you know the extra 250 with more ultimates but it's just not anywhere near the same i mean one character literally is doing 203 minutes this character has potential to do 2000 within within three minutes 
Now let's go over the other situation where you're going to have 60 to 60. So 60 to 60 uh, is just 120 and then in I'm just doing quick math here. And 120 times 2 for the 30 seconds will be, um, oh, wait, 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 120 times 2 is uh, 240. And then, you know, uh, so for 30 seconds, you're going to do 240 shield. And then for that three minutes, there's six instances of that. So times that by six. So on the low end, your uh, character is going to be healing 1,400 shield within three minutes, which is, again, still just incredibly strong. That is literally 14 batteries going off inside of your squad within three minutes. Like, that is just so powerful. So I, I don't know. I kind of I don't want to throw too much shade at these professional players, you know, Imperial Howe and uh, a bunch of the people on sword just not being able to do these meta calls. But honestly, you know, my channel has been doing these meta calls for a long time. So I'm very experienced with, you know, kind of what's going on with the meta, what actually objectively is the strongest, most impactful abilities in the game. And honestly, this is a funny moment in kind of gaming where I'm kind of watching professional players not realize how powerful Conduit actually is. And her abilities are actually belligerently strong. Like, like obviously, clearly the best character is strong. You know, some people will try to say things like Horizon's one of the best characters in the game, but since Jump Towers were released, her kid is actually not viable really at all. And, you know, same thing for Valkyrie. Like, you know, you can use her, you know, the black hole and the space lift and everything, you know, as a way to kill a team. But you could also say Conduit's abilities are just significantly stronger than hers, and then the group movement abilities are relevant because you have Jump Towers. Like, it's just, you know, I mean, sure, like, like the only thing that she gets for her, like, her tactical is being able to throw the tactical in front of the door. Because literally in every other situation, her tactical is worse than a jump tower. Like, you can just throw a jump tower, and your team jumps to the top of a building, and then the jump tower can literally be used to reposition fully and fly to, like, a whole other location where her ability can't do that. And the only way her ability is stronger than a jump tower is throwing it on a door, uh, you know, as someone's pushing in. And, you know, if you're using the strongest team combination or you're using a character like Caustic that's objectively stronger, you're already blocking the door with barrels. And then, you know, if you're using the strongest combination that I'm, you know, selecting, a, you know, what I'm thinking is the strongest where you're using, like, Watson, Conduit, Lifeline, again, you're trapping the door. So it just, it, her abilities just aren't relevant inside of competitive high rank scenarios. So, bleh, I don't know, there's a lot of, like, weird talk about, like, what the best characters are, but I, you know, I, I picked these ones, but the interesting thing about this season that I want to add as a tidbit and just kind of, like, talk about generally towards the end is that there's a lot of characters that are now the strongest characters in the game. With her being the strongest character in the game, it creates a lot of weird team compositions. You know, what I'm doing here with this is kind of creating a moment where you're you're taking max advantage of the most powerful singular combination. Like, you know, Lifeline plus her, you know, creates this crazy moment where you can revive multiple players and give them full shield within five to eight seconds. And just, you know, moments where you have an absolute, you know, your team is just one clipped completely, you actually are still holding advantage. And it's just way too powerful but you can realistically not focus too much on lifelines ability use conduit and just use a bunch of area control legends i mean you could use multiple uh controller legends here you know for area control horizon is a way for area control you know i say she's not really usable in meta but she is an area control legend she does you know deny certain areas cause some problems for teams so you could use that for conduit you know a funny combination would be like gibraltar bangalore plus conduit you use the uh, multiple airstrikes in combination with the the revive bubble to get a little bit of those revives and you have the smokes to you know encourage those revives and create extra time and more area control so you have more time for more health from conduit so there's actually a lot of characters that are significantly powerful you know i would want to point out that support characters generally speaking are now the strongest characters in the game bar none simply because of the revive change um, you know, inside of 10 games, the ability to revive your team with, uh, you know, guns, armor, you know, ammo, stuff like that, and being able to do that from a crafter without actually having to touch your teammates' banners, you know, uh, Crypto kind of in that, that group as well a little bit, you know, make them specifically the strongest legends in the game because it just creates more consistent wins and high kill games. So, you know, these characters being that kind of create a lot of interesting scenarios. You can see scenarios where like Conduit, Lifeline, uh, for infinite health and infinite shield, but then you're also using your Loba to grab those jump towers to reposition very consistently, but then you also have infinite ammo. I'm, there's, a, there's a number of situations that I think would actually be viable. Mirage is kind of a funny one because camping is mega buffed this season because of uh, you know the whole support character change. Mirage and Gibraltar are both incredibly powerful uh, 1v1 characters, so you'll have situations where teams are specifically camping in different locations to guarantee that like even if someone gets caught or something, 
your team still survives, and then you three can have a you know a strong one v one character running around third partying for extra points inside of ranked. And that might not be as you know a viable strategy inside of like competitive with like money on the table, but inside of ranked, it's going to be incredibly powerful strategies. So we're going to see you know people straight up just one v oneing you know huge squads, and huge third parties for free points using Mirage and Gibraltar. So I you know I, I feel like there's a lot of interesting legends that we'll see inside of competitive. And honestly, I mean the the interesting thing for me is I'd, I'd like to see a lot less of horizon i'm not sure justifiably why people would use horizon i mean i can see horizon being used oh discord actor <laughs> like inactivity i can see uh, you know i can see horizon being used in tandem with conduit just as an area control legend but specifically like Area control legends really, you know, they need something that actually enables the area control to be powerful. So, like, you would need to have, like, conduit lifeline. So, like, the specific reason that, like, a, a caustic barrel is a problem is, like, if they down a bunch of people and the team's pushing in, they're about to go through a doorway. You know, if there's a bunch of caustic barrels going off, they might not be able to go through the doorway for a couple seconds where, you know, if there wasn't a caustic barrel, they just go through the doorway and they're, sh you know, shooting the guy that's reviving, you know, that second. But the barrels are there gives you an extra amount of three four seconds and that might be enough time for you to then get a you know more shield heals or that second you know big shield heal so you have like 306 like four batteries going off you know it gives you the extra couple seconds for a uh, lifeline to be able to fully revive someone so specifically like the the area control legends are only going to be powerful because of support characters or specifically conduit and lifeline so i'm just i'm curious to see what other people are going to say as meta picks and this is one of the first times inside of a meta discussion that i've just directly called out multiple professional players and just kind of been like honestly you're just dumb like not even gonna lie like if they don't you know adjust for meta and then we see players playing a bunch of watson but no conduit like it's i mean honestly it's just a failure of the team to be able to like assess meta and what is actually a powerful strategy so i'm just very interested to see what's happening and that's I, this is the only time in meta discussion i'm going to throw shade at people but yeah so you know we're going to end this off and you know like every other discussion we've ever done on meta i have always been correct you know the last time we talked a little bit about rampart becoming more meta and that totally happened towards the end of the season and it was, it was cool to see you know rampart kind of rising close to the top and being a very viable very big legend yes my and playstation thing popped up randomly while i was talking so it just randomly blanked out but honestly i think the video is really great so i'm just gonna leave it in there enjoy your day guys oh <laughs> all right yeah all right so like you know, you know these two characters you know rising to the top i you know when, when catalyst was dropped i immediately was like okay this is actually like probably one of the strongest characters and we'll see her in ranks and towards the end of the season we see you know catalyst on every team ever and the interesting thing now is we're seeing another character that's going to shake the meta up a lot and you know we're looking at you know a slow shift of the meta from movement and reposition characters into uh controller characters and like hold the position and and lock down an area squads being the most powerful and it's gonna be sweet it's gonna be sweet it just makes so many of these characters viable oh like area control fuse yeah fuse is an awesome area control legend he's actually so powerful for area control so there's just again there's just so many legends that are really good area control legends that just become incredibly powerful powerful because lifeline conduit so i i hope you guys have enjoyed the video and maybe take that into your uh you know team compositions and different ideas of what you guys are gonna you know want to do and then also you know just what you would expect to see from a bunch of teams so spinner boy kittens peace